Hey, Ian here. I just want to weigh in on this debate uh, with respect of whether to build your own game engine or use one of the available ones such as Unity 3D or uh, the Unreal Engine. Uh, I, I want to weigh in on it because, hey, wait a minute, Ian, you're building your own game engine, so this would be a prime opportunity to talk about that a little bit. Um, having played with XNA and having played with uh, Unity a fair bit, I would say uh, that they're great engines for the general public, but you get to a point where you want them to do a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a, kind of a play-by-play -play of uh, what went into building the game engine that I'm working with today. So first and foremost, um, I'll bring you over to my code here. Ooh. All right. Disclaimer time. I'm not the, uh, the best coder. I don't do this professionally. I dabble. Uh, so um, don't necessarily take anything that I say as gospel. Also, I swear a lot, so uh, this may not be for all children. Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to define my vertices. Okay, uh, the easiest way to do that is to use a structure. So I will dump my structure in here. Okay, called it model vertices. These are the variables that I have in there. Make sure that these line up with what's available in your model file, whether you're using FBX uh, type files or Maya or Blender or whatnot. Make sure that uh, when you're selecting your variables that uh, they line up with uh, the information available in your model file. One of the things you'll need is you'll also need some includes. Uh, most of them come with the direct step, the DirectX starter kit, which can be downloaded from the DirectX uh, website. Uh, I did work a little bit with the DirectX toolkit. Not a big fan. Ran into a bunch of um, issues that caused my system not to compile and really was tough to um, troubleshoot it. Uh, so uh, that's why I've resulted to building my own. Okay, once we have um, our includes, uh, our kind of our, our, our structure for our model vertices, we have to uh, define the input layout. So what I typically do for that, and it seems to be the common practice, is I use a static uh, predefined variable. So, and as you can see, the structure is associated with the, the vertex layout. So what we'll do is we, we dump this into the to the vertex layout at, at time when we're, we're building uh, the information around our, our graphics. So now that we have that, we can input, um, we'll get a little bit further, we, we have a way of inputting the data from, from our model file. Next thing we need to do is how uh, are we going to modify this? So typical modification of these types of graphics is uh, to use shaders. So the shaders need uh, some way of uh, defining information internal to them. That way is uh, through constant buffers. So uh, I always kind of classify them in four different areas. Uh, the constant buffers that never change, the constant buffers that change on screen resize or are affected by the screen. Say if you, you tilt your um, uh, tablet or you uh, resize the screen on your on your Windows monitor so um, and then I follow that up with uh, stuff that changes per frame so we'll have we'll have a game cycle where we'll do an update and then we'll dr draw what we update uh, so the stuff that'll need to be updated on each fr frame as well as what's going to need to be updated for each actual model now there's some stuff that you I'll show you later on of how I try to draw everything that's going to be all on screen all at once and um, having this specific uh, constant buffer allows me to uh, even change what um, shaders I use per, on a per model basis or even on a sub mesh basis. Okay so the next thing I use I'll grab the stuff that never changes so that's my typically my lighting kind of seems to be my main thing my lights stay in the same spot, everything moves around my lights. So um, 
the key thing I want you to grab here is the static assert. Um, what we need to do is we got to make sure that this lines up with the uh, 16 bytes. Um, so it's got a, all the data in here has to be a multiple of 16 bytes. If it's not, uh, the troubles that I've run into um, from anomalous data getting through to the shader and the shader's just not functioning as expected, uh, then you have to get into the, the graphic debugger that's that's now available in, in uh, Visual Studios but wasn't available before when I started all this thing. Causes huge amounts of problems, so it's a, it's a key item here. Uh, and then all I do is I, uh, I, I define the default on my ambient, uh, just so if I don't set any of these other things, um, hopefully my object will be visible or as part of the scene. Next will be uh, the stuff that I change on the resize of the screen. There's very few things that are involved with this. Some of them you may have already guessed. So we got the projection uh, and then the height and width. As you can see here, this is the padding. This is a variable I had to put in just to make sure that it's a, a multiple of 16 bytes. Again, causes huge problems. Make sure in your constructor that you statically assert uh, the 16-bit aligned. All right, uh, now we're going to go into the structure for uh, stuff that changes every frame. Okay, again, looks very familiar. Again, we're just defining um, structures to, to pass to our shaders. Um, views a good one in time. Last but not least, my favorite one is goofing with the models. This is where the rubber hits the road. Anybody who is a good uh, graphics programmer that really truly understands shaders, uh, they, they're, they're wizards in their own right. Not my forte, but um, I play around with it enough that, uh, that I have fun and I, I can make stuff look pretty good. Um, again, we got to pad this one as well. So uh, defined all the padding. So we defined all the constant buffers. We've designed, defined our uh, input layout. So that's what we're going to be feeding uh, from our model file or our model mesh file to our vertex shader. And then we define how that, uh, how that is inter entered in. So that, in a nutshell, is what I typically put down in my, my constant buffer. And I'll use this uh, throughout all of my my rendering software or my my game renderer as I like to call it um, and this is the start of the game engine thanks very much for joining us um, typically on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays between about 10 and 12 I um, throw this coding up onto uh, twitch so you can watch me uh, pull my hair out as I uh, do a little bit of coding to to move this game engine forward so like I said Tuesdays and Thursdays from about 10 to 12 and then uh, as we go ahead, I'm going to keep uh, adding these videos about how to uh, put together a game engine, starting off with a graphic renderer. All right. Thanks very much. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast. Talk to you later.